There might be something to that. Why is it racist to say? Why is it racist? It's not racist to say we're smarter. It's racist to say something is less smart. Right, but Less, yeah. But no, we're the smartest ones. Maybe second. Maybe the Chinese guy you beat. Um, Well, you know, Asians, this is what's really crazy. Yeah. There's a real issue right now with Asians and university enrollments, particularly in Harvard. They discriminate against Asians. Because so many apply? Because so many are kicking ass. Yeah, so they're they doing discriminate so well. against to get them out of mm-hmm. there? Yeah, and there's, there's like real talk about how this is crazy because Asian people for, by, all right, this is a generalization and I'm trying not to be racist, but generally speaking, Asian students are known as working very hard yeah. and they're very dedicated and they're very successful and their representation is overwhelming in terms of their numbers in the population. And For so, sure, they're killing it. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah. And because of that, and their, their mindset is to just work really hard. It's not to protest things and not to shut things down. It's just to oh, work really hard. Oh, yeah, they're really in the hard. library. During all those protests, they're right. just in the library. Them so and the Indians. While this is all happening, I'm not saying that they're not socially conscious, but while this is all happening, they're not protesting it the way maybe other groups that felt marginalized, whether it's people of color or trans people or gay people, whatever it is that don't feel represented or discriminated against, they would be shutting down, you know, conferences and yeah, yelling yeah, down yeah. speakers and sh- shouting out in the hallway. But the Asians, the whole reason why they kick ass is because they don't spend any time on petty bullshit. <laughs> They're just like, get done. Get so it because done. of that, the Harvard, Harvard, fucking Harvard is saying, hey, we're going to be racist against you because we know you're not going to complain. Whoa, wow, what? Look at this. What? Pull this up. Pull this up, Jamie. I want you to pull up Asian students harder to get into Harvard lawsuit. That's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. And it's not a small amount they're discriminating by. They're making their grades considerably higher in order to gain acceptance. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so is that because of a natural breakdown of different races? You can't, no you, you can't slow one down. That okay? not just it's means Harvard would have less... less Productive graduates? It doesn't make any sense. It's a crazy way of thinking, but it's all in this idea of diversity. Like, instead of treating people as individuals, instead of just saying human beings, you have to have each class represented by a certain amount of people. That's this nuts. Is, but it's not anti race It's like, it's not a racist idea to want everybody to be treated as one. It's just, it can be done with an eye on avoiding all possible racism. It can be done to treat yeah. people purely as individuals. Here's the worst way that can ever be done. The worst way is get, you tell the most <laughs> successful people who are complaining the here. least that they have to work harder. You are getting fucked by your genes. You, the people in your past, in your group, your little gene pool, too good. You're <sighs> doing too good in school, so we're going to make it harder than it is for my kids. That's nuts. That's literally what people are doing. Because if they didn't, Harvard would be like all Asians. Asians would be dominating. And it, the very reason why they think they can get away with this. Lawsuit accuses Harvard of discriminating against Asian American applicants in personal ratings. Personal ratings. I don't know what it is, man. They're making it more difficult. It says, students for fair admissions has accused Harvard of intentionally discriminating against Asian American applicants by limiting their admissions numbers. So they're limiting the numbers they're of only Asians. this many Asians. Yep. Only this many Asians. And by the way, that's super hard for like, let's say like Vietnamese or not the Chinese or Japanese. Cra- you know, Asians. Yeah, we should say lo- we don't know if this is true. We should say, you know, just to be really oh, clear, this is a lawsuit. We don't know if this is true. But this is the argument, and this is the argument that many, many, many people have made. Now, I haven't really personally researched this, but I know a lot of like legitimate intellectuals have brought this up in debates and conversations, and they're saying, look, this is an issue. This is essentially, this is sanctioned racism against one group because they're too effective. So you're limiting the number. Or you're saying where we're trying to get more of an emphasis on like extracurricular. You, you shouldn't like, get in or out yeah. based on being Asian or based on being European. That's crazy. You should get in or out by you having merit and you yeah. being a, a, a worthy student. And difficult schools like Harvard are supposed to be difficult. And if the cream of the crop all comes from Asia... Shouldn't we look at what the fuck we're doing here that we can't compete with them? I mean, what is it? Wow, they're getting do we want, rid of Asian students. Do we want to compete with them? I mean, is it too much? Are they re- requiring too much of their life to be successful with their, stu- their schoolwork? Uh, I mean, yeah. That's the thing, too. If you're going through college. Are they college, saying like, we want a normal life? You want to like, develop right. your normal life, too? But if you're going through college and everything you're doing all day is studying, and yeah. you literally you might have like some fucking shitty part-time job somewhere to make some money. 
for food, and then you're studying more, right? Maybe you have a part-time job. A lot of people don't. So if you think about all that That's time, not the kind of life I want for my kids. That's a crazy life, yeah, man. Yeah, no way. You, and especially with uh, some of the things are just, for four years, some of the things, it's not the, anything you're really interested in, but you have to get it on. You, you have to be, you know, you have to have a, a fully balanced education. So you have to take classes you're not even remotely interested in. And you have to do it. And it's this one way. And this is how we can assure that you have enough knowledge that we can give you a piece of paper that says you have a degree. I mean... And the Asians are killing it. They are killing it. They're they killing, are killing it. it. They're like, that's the game? Okay, okay. I'll play within those rules. Well, we're just going to work 20 hours. A Dude, I, my friend, Junksik, I, I think I've told you about him before. He was a U.S. National Taekwondo team member. Uh -huh. When I was like... Mm. I was like... What's Junksik? Indonesian? Junksik Chang. He's Korean. Oh, Chang. He was going really? through his fucking residency. He was going to be a doctor. Going through his residency and training for the national team. And he was running stairs. Running stairs in the school. In between studying, wow. he would do studying, then he would run the stairs. How are you going to hold a guy like that back? Dude, you couldn't hold him back. He slept four hours a night. That, if that's true, that's, that's the same shit as like... He was what? always tired. Yeah. He was always tired. Because he, he works hard. He so didn't, fucking He win. didn't give a fuck. He was always tired. He would just show up exhausted and kick ass. Wow. And he wasn't physically talented either. This guy made it to the, to the nationals. And he, he became a national champion, and he wasn't even, like, really, really physically talented. He wasn't, like, some freak athlete that just moves super fast. You can't, he's just fucking unbelievably smart, unbelievably hard worker. But I saw the way that guy was living as he was, like, I was a couple years younger than him, and he was going through his residency and training and doing all this crazy shit at the same time. And I was, I was like, I'm exhausted just watching you. Like, I can't see how this could be worth it to do all those things. To do one of those things, maybe. That's what I want to do. I want to do one of those things. But you're doing two of those <laughs> things. He, he was doing what I was doing. And then on top of and that. And then more. And way more. Way more. He was doing schoolwork. <laughs> Dad was dr del delivering newspapers and shit. Yeah. You know what? This, the, if that's happening, they're just saying, like, it's the same thing as, like, making it so white people get ahead. <laughs> It's crazy. But, but it's like, you oh, can't there's loitering do that. laws now. You're arrested if you don't have a job. But that's, this is where you could realize that all this stuff is crazy. You're, you're, you're being racist against a minority. Yeah. And you think it's okay because they kick so much ass. Because they're powerful. Yeah. So you're I mean, like, we can, we, we can take them down some. It's literally racist. Because yeah. if you're saying you can only have a certain number of these people in there. It's crazy. That's racist. It's got to be to, to, to say, no, we're trying to keep a diverse population. So it's you know not what? a representative yeah. population of the best of the best then. Yeah. I mean, they should take off any of their names off their applications or something like that and just be like, let's see what they got. Yeah. But I guess they'd probably judge you based on many things, right? You know, they tried that for the old Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Just take the names off the applications? Say, we don't want to see your names, just your writing sample. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's smart. Well, here's what happened, though. They hired only white males. God damn it. Yeah. And then Jon Stewart was like, okay, I guess we going to... in blind is not enough. I damn. guess we fucked up. He didn't even say like, well, that just shows it's not our fault. That's just fucking randomly. We had eight people and they happened to be white dudes. Here's the thing though. If you had movers, okay, and you wanted to move furniture and you tested people for moving furniture, <laughs> is it okay to hire all men? Yeah. It's okay. Why? Because they're physically stronger. Physically, right. yeah. Now, um, is it okay to hire someone who you think is going to be the best at the job, or do you have to have a certain amount of women? So you wouldn't expect it from something physical, like right. a moving company. But why should it be mandatory for something like a creative thing? Well, it's different a little bit because no one except the client is appreciating the movers. So right. it's just like, if I'm hiring, I'm the only one who will have to deal with it. <clears throat> like, say if you were... Say if you were um, Doing a show uh, like a woman's show, a woman's comedy show. Okay. And wait, am I, am I me now, or am I a woman? You'd have to be a woman, I guess. Okay, go ahead. And you want you are a female executive producer, and you wanted to have like a female voice to it, so you sure. wanted to just hire some really funny chicks. Uh huh. And what guy is gonna? I know obviously it happens way, 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 way more often the opposite way where women get discriminated against. But what guy is gonna say no? Fuck that! I want a part of this. Oh, right. You know, I should have a job here. You so should a troll, be equal. A troll, a troll you should be that. equally represented, yeah. male versus female. Because that's what a lot of people feel like when it comes to men and women. Like someone was telling Bert on his podcast that the comedy <laughs> store should be half women. <laughs> I know. That lady just, it's, she, she honestly has no idea what American comedy is all about. Was she Chell Sutton in it? LA. Yeah, yeah. She's speaking in an unformed way, the way <laughs> Chell does a lot. I mean, it's ridiculous.
Dude, it's not a joke. He's just not that smart. You don't get to tell that. Whatever. But this woman was the same as Chael, where she was like uninformed and just going full bore. Yeah. Um, and she wasn't doing it to promote anything. She was just doing it because she thought it was right. But it's like, oh, you don't really understand how this works. Um, yeah. There's a process. Or it's like I saw a blog once that we need more women in in like hiring positions. And it's like, oh, you mean the head of the comedy store, the head of the fucking comedy cellar, head of New York Comedy Club, uh, uh, Colbert. Like there's plenty of female bookers. Like you don't really know. So when you tell them that, then it, then they should go. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Well, there's certain things that people love to say when they've done almost no research on what it actually is. Yeah, yeah. So that they lady, that lady that. had no clue. She just goes, "I'm not getting in here. I'm a big comic. I'm not getting in here. It must be. It's just not causation and causality." She goes, "It must be because of this. I've had my agents call, and it's like, oh no, I work for Mitzi. When agents or managers call, say my my client in, she go, fuck off. That's not the way we do things here." 